Hello, everybody. Thank Hello. Uh, well, I'm going to talk to you about gamification. Uh, gamification is one of the most important things the industry I work for actually does today. But not a lot of people are aware of this. But I can assure you that in 10 years from now, there are going to be. So uh, first, what is gamification? Gamification is actually just grabbing the simple things that we see in games and applying them to make events or real things in real life more engaging. Well, this sounds great in paper, but of course with, very, you know, with every like, good innovation, there's also uh, the bad side for abuse, and this is no exception. So um, perhaps we can actually, with this idea, improve the educational system that we have today and even make it a bit more engaging. Uh, the, what, what I wanted to tell you is that uh, let's first see or compare our entertainment options that we had before, a hundred years ago, and what we have today. If you think about it, the entertainment that we have actually today has become very visceral. There's a lot of money and science that has been invested on that side. And actually, our educational model has not advanced from the, his, from the one that we had uh, 200 years ago. And the same goes with our works, if you think about it. Some of our jobs actually are not more fun than a thousand years ago. And even traditional advertisement hasn't actually kept up. Now we are actually engaged to so much, to, to so much advertisement per second that actually our play is become much more fun than our real life. And this is a very pressing concern, not for, humans, not for society, but for human dignity at large. And I, I think this is something that we have to actually tackle. Even with today labor saving devices, we have seen a dropout when it comes to schooling and workforce. So hence gamification. Gamification, what it is, is actually grabbing those small Skinner box techniques, which are like, for example, leveling up, achievements, quests, checklists, and rewards, and try to actually implement them to the classroom to make it more engaging. And there's a thousand vectors that we can actually go through when it comes to implementing these types of concepts when it comes to education. But I'm going to actually just point you the most simple ones for you to know how important this is to improve our educational system. Our first one is 21st century skills. 21st century skills have actually uh, been a study on the highest levels of our educational system. And there are schools that will prepare our people from to our young students of today for the world of tomorrow. They are critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. You know what, when I first heard of these skills, I thought they're great. Well, they're great things that we actually practice every day in games. And not a lot of people actually realize them. The, the, the thing is that right now, these skill sets are really hard to implement in the classroom. And it's a struggle that a lot of educa educators are actually having right now when it comes to this. And the thing is that games, even though that they're so good at doing them, yeah, you sometimes check out when you're playing a game like this. And you don't realize that you're actually learning a skill set like this. This phenomenon is actually very well known in the educational world, and it's called transference, yeah, or transfer of practice. And it's the idea that some of the, that, that some of the content that you're going to see in the classroom or in the game, you're going to apply it to real life. And it's actually a very hard, a very hard thing to do sometimes, because you often hear of, of kids, for example, that say that they're not good at math. Well, it actually is, means that they are actually not transferring that knowledge of mathematics to the real life. Well, games are actually very good at doing this on that side, on the fact that they're actually giving you a feeling that you're actually in control of yourself. But you know what? There is a very key struggle when it comes to this, because implementing them in the school is actually quite hard, or making the students make that knowledge meaningful to them in real life. And Actually, there's no silver bullet for this. And you know, I could give you many fancy design tricks to try to improve this, but there's a much more simple key, teachers. Teachers are as important, or if not more important, in a game-enabled classroom. Why? Because teachers in a game-enabled classroom have the ability to actually grab the knowledge that that game uh, gives and apply it and make it meaningful to real life. And at the same time, these games 
would actually free up teachers to give enough teachers the resources to uh, identify, for example, whose, whose kids are actually struggling the most, or also focus on the majority of the key, on, on them less or, or less focus on the kids that are actually having a facility to actually learn more independently. And this actually makes the teacher having more resources to empower and enable learning. And this is one of the most important things or key facts in education. Well, locally, he, me and my team in my company yeah, uh, are very, very concerned with this. And, and the thing is that that's exactly our job to try to improve the way education is actually right now meant. So uh, a great team of engineers developed this amazing tool, yeah, which the experience of it is fantastic, because we in Songhai, we realize that uh, kids are losing the feeling to learn by playing. And it's a feeling that we personally miss. We, we believe that a proficient education has something to do with playing and having fun. And that includes collabor collaboration and being active. So uh, I would like to introduce you to the Songhai Studio. That is a tool, educational tool, that we use to actually teach kids music and 21st century skills. Now the key struggle with these skills, as I, as I show you there, is actually that all these skills cannot be learned by route. They have to be learned by experience. And games, by their own interactive nature, are actually great tools to actually do that because they actually learn or teach by experience to the user that is interacting with the game or the platform itself. And for example, a game, for example, in science can teach the kids collaboration. A game, a game in history can teach kids actually how to communicate with each other. A game of math teaches critical thinking to everybody that uses it. And a game of music or art can actually teach the, the, the kids creativity. So it's a matter of empowering the teacher to actually facilitate the student also to have a better learning experience. And this brings us to a very important thing in games, that is the illusion of choice. That is also something that uh, teachers actually use every day, but sometimes they're not aware of it. This is, this is sometimes referred as agency. The feeling of agency is one of the most things that actually game, the majority of game, the majority of the games do it, but it's one of the things that are, is the most overlooked when it comes to education and the implementation with gaming. Why? Because a game can actually show you your conse the consequences of your actions in a compressed scale. And that's a feeling that actually every kid needs to know how they can behave and, can, and what is the consequences of their actions and how to interact with them. And at the same time, the other part of agency is the feeling of empowerment. It's the feeling of actually giving the kid the possibility of not taking uh, choices off the table. And already kids are very good at that. How many times you go to a school and you hear like kids that I want to be an astronaut or I want to be a scientist or I want to be a rap artist. Well, they're great. But now how do you empower that? Well, that's the thing. You need to actually apply it to real life and make it engaging to the kid 
that their education, they, they have some transference to what their goal is in this case, or their dream. And games, by their own interactive nature, also empower the kid to be the hero of that story. So because of that, that empowerment is actually very unique for them. After this, this takes us to actually what it's standard curriculums. Standard curriculums, at the end of the run, if you think about it, they're not good for anyone. Actually, we can agree that they're not good for, <laughs> they don't fit almost anyone. And the thing is that it doesn't mean that they're bad. It's just the fact that it's the structure that the educational system has built upon, so universities can build upon that knowledge when the students are graduated. But at the end, it's actually very hard for the teacher to actually identify the kids that are actually are having a struggle. As I mentioned, you never, you, it's not that you find a person when they say, I'm not good at math or I'm not good at physics. It's the fact that at some point in their educational experience, some part of the curriculum didn't fit to them. And that small gap, it started becoming bigger and bigger until the point that they actually completely zone out. Well, this can be tackled very simply if the teacher had actually the tools to track the student performance and the way that they interact with the application itself. So, in games, by their own nature, actually already do that. In a game, we can already know where you click, how you behave, how many times you have tried, how many times you have sown out, when, when, what is your feeling and interaction on the consequences of your actions. So, um, implementing that in the classroom is something that games are really good and it would give the teacher a tool, the tools and the power to know better and understand how the kids actually behave on their personal experience of learning. Concurrently with this, we actually see that we have two actual fronts when it comes to gaming and education. We have fun games and we have learning games. And some in, at, some ta at some part in history, for some reason, they are actually separated and they they actually lost something, both of the sides lost something very, very unique. Fun games lost the possibility to actually giving you an added value. And learning games lost the possibility of being fun. And because of that, both trenches started going bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's something that actually, uh, right now, the gamification of education or edutainment is going to is starting to tackle. When it comes to this, yeah, one of the key parts of actually tackling this type of scenario is a phenomenon that uh, it has been studied in education before and right now is something that games are actually very good at trying to implement it that is called tangential learning. Tangential learning is the idea of actually presenting subjects to in a contextual context where you are already engaged in. So, in this concept is the idea that, or the core part, is that part of your audience will self-educate just because they are already engaged in that subject. So in this case, actually, we have great examples of, of developers that are actually having or have done uh, this in real life, like, for example, in historical games or time management games where they have applied historical elements to actually teach the user some historical content. But at the same time, this can be applied on many, many, many different vectors. And at the end, the idea with this is actually to make the student not to zone out completely. Because at the end of the run, what we are trying to do here is trying to make the education not only fun and not only unique, but also an experience that would give you uh, a feeling of power, that you have the feeling of creativity, and that at the same time, it actually gives you the tools for real life to actually become more engaged. And at the same time, technology right now allows us to do this. And if we don't take advantage of this, the problem is that we are going to actually make, have a very big or a more wide deficit when it comes to the quality of the, the educational system we have today. So homogenizing that in real life would actually make it much more simpler for everybody. And the thing is that implementing these concepts in games, uh, in education, uh, is not that hard. We don't need to actually uh, sacrifice large chunks of our curriculum to actually uh, uh, implement these game concepts. It's actually very easy to do so. 
for uh, uh, many techniques that we have used before in the in the in the side of implementing educational con you know, game concepts in in education has been, for example, the way of grading. Grading always actually this encourages the student because they're punished by the mistakes that they they, they do in the classroom. In this case. In integrating elements like RPG elements, role, role uh, action playing elements in uh, scoring the kids actually has improved the way the kids uh, interact with the classroom itself. Because the way that we have done it is that instead of actually going to a classroom where the kid starts on 100 or 10 and then every task that they do or every mistake they you subtract, uh, they, what you do here is that every kid starts from zero and then whatever they do they are actually just gaining and then leveling up and becoming more powerful let's just say. So it's a matter of the perspective that you actually put these educational concepts. It's not changing it, it's just the way that you present it to the classroom. So at the end of the run, uh, I, just to finish quickly, I would like to with all the concepts that I present you, when someone asks you why, would, why should we integrate games in education, tell them about 21st century skills. Tell them about you would like your children to actually be more communicative. Think better. Actually uh, have a better interaction with society. Tell them how a feeling of agency is so powerful for the kids to actually be the leaders of the future. And tell them how tangential learning can apply real life concepts to other types of our life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much, Daniel. Any question at all? We can uh, invite one. Yes. Question? One, two, three. I have one, if you don't have one. As a parent, we worry a lot about exposing our children to computer games too much. Mm -hmm. Obviously, your game is so good, then the children they hook to, and then parents, what, you know, I don't want my children to play games for so many hours. So how do you solve this problem? I don't see it as a problem. I actually see it that, uh, that's why I talk about transference, is the fact that if the game shows um, an added value, and then you have someone that, instruct, that instructs you or guides you, to apply that value meaningfully to your real life, then it doesn't matter how long you play games. I know that playing a game, a fun game, it actually it does give you an added value at the end of the run. For example, a game like Final Fantasy would teach you, uh, would teach you collaboration. Or a game like, uh, like Hearthstone or, uh, or, or, uh, or, or Kingdom Hearts actually teach you, t teaches you how to function in a routine. Even a, main, a game like Minecraft to a child teaches, them, teaches the kid creativity. But we often don't see that. We often don't have that transference. And that's actually the key part, the guide. That's why I said that the key thing is actually in this type, the teacher and the way that the information is presented to the student. For example, there's a very good example of this uh, educator in the United States that right now is teaching kids, uh, nine-year-old kids uh, ethics by playing the game of The Walking Dead, for example. And it's a game of zombies. Nothing to do with it. Well, kids would love zombies. Um, so I have to sort of summarize a little bit in Chinese. For you, a little bit of advertisement for you. Actually,上海是在上海的创意设计创意书院有四节每节一个钟头的workshop。这个workshop其实是它刚才给大家看到一个作曲人去的。其实我之前其实听过他们说,在芬兰那里他们将这个 Program,就是入了學校的,就是學創意教育 玩完之後,原來有東西,我回到家裡,去回到現實生活裡。所以為什麼我們在Diversity都要帶一些家長很喜歡的電子遊戲的教育,因為其實混用得宜,有適當的階段,老師好,家長有看住,不是逼著的。
Uh, he's actually going to uh, make a demo show, so uh, you're all welcome. Thank you very much for your time.